Hello and welcome back to my channel, Mental Health with Melissa. If you're new here, I'm Melissa. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content. I post new videos every single Sunday and Wednesday, and I apologize, I did not post a new video on um, this past Sunday. Um, I have been having a lot of changes and was out of town and uh, was trying to kind of get everything together, but it's always healthy to sometimes take a step back and focus on some mindfulness and be present and that's really what I try to do. So I'm back on my routine schedule. Thanks for bearing with me. I have a new video for you today. Um, if you are not yet subscribed, please do so. Subscribing to my channel helps me get more mental health information out there to our communities of color and tons of free LCSW test prep on my channel, including a LCSW study guide that is now available for purchase down below in the description box. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on um, this video, but basically it is a complete study guide of the things that you need to know that are going to be on the test uh, with tons of private videos for you, a mock exam, and a complete uh, schedule, study guide schedule. It's a 10-week program. So feel free to head down below. So today let's go ahead and get into the content of the video. So today we are going to be looking at the CAGE and Audit C. So for those of you that are not familiar with what these terms or these words are, I'm going to go into detail about what the acronyms stand for. But basically, these are brief uh, screening tools that are used to determine the severity of alcohol consumption. And it's really helpful to use these screening tools in, for example, a primary care office. So a nurse may ask a patient this before they see a doctor, a social worker or a case manager or some sort of um, mental health therapist may ask a uh, client this during the intake session right before therapy gets started or this may be given to somebody on a clipboard waiting to see a specialist or something like that um, so that the provider will get the results and see if it is required that this person maybe get additional assistance or um, a more thorough and in-depth SUD assessment and screening. So we're going to go ahead and get into this. There may be some questions in the LCSW exam about the audit C um, and the CAGE. I'm not quite sure if they include these questions as regularly as they have in the past, but nonetheless, we're going to go ahead and get into it because if you are a social worker, this is something that you definitely need to know. So stay Okay, tuned. so we're going to take a look at the CAGE assessment first. So the CAGE assessment assessment is a preliminary test, like I said, so it's a screening that a lot of providers use, not um, specialty SUD providers, but more primary care providers, and it's a set of questions that are used to show uh, you that you may have a substance abuse dependency as an adult. So the letters CAGE stand for CUT, ANNOYED, GUILTY, and I, based on the questions. Um, that can help if tell if you have substance abuse, which you may be referred to maybe a more specialty um, said provider. So number one, have you ever felt that you should cut down on your drinking? Number two, have people annoyed you by criticizing your drinking? Number three, have you ever felt bad or guilty about your drinking? And number four, have you ever had a drink first thing in the morning to steady your nerves or get rid of a hangover? So as you can see, these are just yes or no questions. They're pretty basic. And again, that's why a lot of primary care providers or um, mental health providers or therapists will use this during a first time visit or a first time meeting so that they can really determine if there are some uh, drinking problems associated with maybe the presenting concerns. So how is the CAGE assessment scored? So as again, as you saw, it was a, it, these are all yes or no questions. So each no is a zero and each yes is a one. And if the total sum of the scores for the questions is greater, it may indicate an alcohol use issue. A total score of two or higher is considered significantly clinical or clinically significant, if you will. 
So um, this is a important sort of tool to be used again, kind of at the intake or at the very initial stages. So it's something that if you are a therapist or you um, work as a social worker and you want to get to know the client that you're going to be providing therapy or case management services to, it's a really good sort of screening to put in your intake so that if the score is two or more, they'll give you the opportunity to conduct a, a more in-depth and detail-oriented assessment about this person's SUD history or, and when I say SUD, that stands for Substance Use Disorder History, and just ask more questions, more follow-up questions about the, this person's drinking. So that's how this, the CAGE is uh, usually scored. And again, if it's a primary care physician's office, they will talk to the patient about the recommended drinking levels and usually refer to a specialty SUD provider. So just like the CAGE, the Audit C, or the Alcohol Use Disorders Identification Test Consumption Screening Tool, Audit C, is a three-question screening that can help identify patients with alcohol misuse disorder. So the Audit C can help identify individuals who are hazardous drinkers or who have had alcohol use disorders, including alcohol abuse or dependence. So it's similar to the CAGE in that it is a preliminary screening, but it's shorter in that it's only three questions and it's not a yes or no questionnaire. So we're gonna take a look at it. So the items are question one, how often do you have a drink containing alcohol? So there's a couple of different options to select from, as you can see here, zero to four. Um, and then two, so this is a mistake, skip to questions nine to 10. So there is an audit, uh, another audit questionnaire that has more than three questions, but the audit C is a, is a shorter and more brief sort of uh, questionnaire and screening tool. So question two, how many drinks containing alcohol do you have on a typical day when you are drinking? And you see here, there's different options, one to two, three to four, five to six, seven to nine, 10 or more. How often do you have six or more drinks on one occasion? And then you see the options are never, less than monthly, monthly, weekly, daily, or almost daily. So if it's never for question one, then you stop there because if the answer is that they never have um, any alcohol, then there's no need to ask these follow-up questions. If, of course, it's any other option that's answered with, then, then you continue to the next two questions. So the audit C is scored on a scale of zero to 12 points. Scores of zero, like I said, for number one, zero, reflect no alcohol use in the past year. In men, a score of four points or more is considered positive for alcohol misuse. In women, a score of three points or more is considered positive. And that has a lot to do with just the body mass index and how women and men uh, physiologically process alcohol differently. So generally, the higher the audit C score, the more likely it is that the patient's drinking is affecting his or her health or safety. So in the same way that the cage would be used as a prim preliminary sort of screening tool, so with the audit C, so if you do get these answers in which it's four or more points for men, three or more for women, then you can talk more about the drinking, ask follow-up questions if that's something that you do in your practice, or uh, provide referrals to the um, more specialty providers. But regardless, it's okay if you want to provide some psychoeducation because there are um, recommended drinking amounts for men and for women, and so you can always look that up and give that to your uh, patients as well. So why are these screening tools important? The reason why these screening tools are important is because sometimes we don't bring up uh, drinking or alcohol consumption in intake, or maybe it's not something that comes up, or maybe it just may feel a little bit uncomfortable for either the client to, to bring it up or for the provider to bring it up. But when we have these sorts of brief screening tools, they give us a picture of uh, how often 
somebody is drinking, how much somebody is drinking, and if we need to come up with a plan to have a more detailed assessment of these drinking patterns, and this can tell us a lot. So this is why these kind of basic tools are very beneficial to providers in the medical field and also in the mental health field. So I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I really like talking about these kind of brief screening tools. I think in another video, I'm going to be talking about the GAD7 and the PHQ9. So if anybody knows about those screenings, leave them, um, leave a comment in the comment section below because I'm really curious to know if you do. And I can do a video describing in depth what those screening tools are and how we use them because I use them a lot in my private practice as a therapist. And they're very helpful to really assess how people are doing. So um, again, let me know if that's going to be helpful for you. Thank you again so much for watching. Until next time, managing mental health matters.